have to say, this room has got almost all of my favorite people in it, <laughs> in one room, and it's just amazing. So I'm thrilled to be here. And I want to start with a, a question for you guys. That is, uh, can you see yourself? <laughs> yes? Everybody, can you see yourself in the back? Yeah, you can see yourselves? Yes, yes? Excellent. Well, this proves that the universe is holographic. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, one of the big questions unanswered in science today is, is the universe holographic? Of course, not in this room, that's not unanswered. <laughs> Out there in the larger field of science is still a question, is the universe holographic? And in current theories, they propose that our experiential field of reality, our three-dimensional world, is actually a projection from a two-dimensional surface, just like we see in a man-made hologram. And as you see, when we make a holographic image, coherent laser light is shined onto an object. And the light that reflects off the object creates a pattern that is recorded into the photosensitive emulsion on a flat glass plate, along with the original coherent laser light. And when they come together, it creates an interference pattern, an abstract interference pattern, that when the coherent laser light is shined on the glass plate again, it creates an image that is very much three-dimensional, just like we see in our three-dimensional world here. So this is, for example, a cute little image of a mouse that is one hologram with two different views that you can see of the image. Now, in the current physics models, they use this model of an apparent two-dimensional surface projecting a three-dimensional image as the basis for a model of a holographic universe. And I'm here to say, <laughs> as I'm sure many of us are here to say, and this has said many times, this is a, this is a very limited and short-sighted model to base the nature of the universe on. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, using the model of a, a flat glass holographic plate as a model of universal reality is just one step better than using a photograph, actually. And while they both portray a representative image of our experience of reality, they do so with such a limited degree of information that it's actually a bit funny that we would do so, you know? And that's why in science, um, you know, they've been challenged to really address this because the model is so limited. So I'm here today to offer what I feel is a, a far simpler model. And it, it's actually kind of so, so simple and so obvious that it's actually, I think, been largely overlooked. And I've been contemplating this model since 2003 when I one evening came to realize that the entire field of light that we perceive behaves exactly the same as a holographic image. So in order to understand this, we need to turn on our holographic minds. We need to start actually thinking holographically, which this group is getting very, very good at. <laughs> And it begins with um, understanding what I feel is the defining characteristic of a holographic image. It's very simple. And that is that the image of the whole is present at every point. So whereas with a photograph, the image is captured on a one-to-one -one basis. You see the object, and you see the image, and there's just one view of the image at one size. In a holographic image, the image of the whole object is captured at every point on the holographic plate. So for example, every corner of this cube is captured at every point on the plate, not just a one-to-one. -one. 
uh, image. And so ultimately, the image of the whole cube is captured at every point, and it's really the light information being reflected off it that's captured at every point. And so the image of the whole cube is captured at every point on the plate. And it's also captured at every size, at every scale on the plate, from the whole plate down to the smallest point. And as it's well known, when a, a holographic image is broken into pieces, instead of getting just four pieces of the image like we do with a photograph, every piece has an image of the whole on it. And if we continue to break it down even further, we still get the image of the whole in every piece. Now the image gets less clear as it gets smaller because there's less of that holographic information, that interference pattern of the image at each scale. But the image of the whole is present still nonetheless. And so the image of the whole is present at every point and it's also present at every scale, which makes this a fully fractal and holographic model. So let's turn our attention now to our experiential, experiential reality right here, this 3D space that we're in, and see if we can find a correlation to this fractal and holographic model. I meant to ask, can you guys all see me okay? Excellent, because that proves the universe is holographic also, <laughs> just like the mirror did. So let's really turn on our, our holographic minds and see how this is so. So the reason that you can see me is because my image, that is the light reflected off of me, is present at every point in the field of this room. And not just my whole image, but every part of me, from my eyes and nose and fingers and toes, every part of me is present at every point in the room. And it's also present at every scale in the room. So here you all sit, and you see, you're seeing me up here on the stage, and seeing me through the very small opening in the pupils of your eyes. And between me and your eyes in this holographic field of light is a repeating pattern at all scales of the image of me and the stage in the room converging right to the point where your eyes are. Here's something that's really kind of trippy about this, <laughs> is that my image, my face, is literally mapped onto every surface that's in, within line of sight of me. So that every point on your body, your skin, your face, and everything, my face is right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the other trippy thing is that my eye, for example, my face, my eye, is literally present at every point. So even just the, the eye itself is literally present at every point in the space and on all the surfaces in the room. And so now let's turn this around. So from where I stand, I can see all of you. And I can see the whole room. And that means that the image of all you in the whole room is present right where my eye is in this field of space. And I know that your image is here as well, in this point of space right next to me. Now when I look here, I don't see you. But when I step over here and look over here, yep, there you are. <laughs> it's beautiful magic. <laughs> and then I know you're over here as well in this point. And I know that my image is here at this point. And the image of the back of the stage, in fact, the image of the whole room is present right here at this point as well. And so the image of the whole is present at every point in this field of light, which is the defining characteristic of a holographic image. <laughs> so what does this tell us? It says that the entire field of light that we perceive is fully and unequivocally holographic. As a matter of fact, if it were not holographic, our visual perception wouldn't work the way it does, and nor would all of optical physics work the way it does. If it were not holographic, for example, you might not be able to see me. There would be a gap in the field. <laughs> you might be sitting in one of those seats where you're like, ah, there's a gap. I can't see him, you know, I got to lean over and there he is. And 
<laughs> but that's not the case, right? No one's ever had that experience. And so our visual perception only works the way it does because light is holographic, this whole field of light. And the same is true for sound. You can all hear my voice, yes? And you can hear each other. And all the sound from all the sources inside the room or outside the room, we can all hear it wherever we are in the field. It's because of this that we don't experience gaps in our hearing. That wherever we place our ears in the field, we can hear the whole soundscape. This means that sound is holosonic and light is holographic. And together they combine into what I call the sonoluminous holo field, <laughs> which is our everyday experience of perception here. So sono is sound and lumen is light, holo is whole and field is the space. And in every moment, we are hearing and peering into this field. Now, here's what's really key to understanding the fullness of this model, is that the image of the whole that we perceive is always a relative image. It's always a relative hologram that we're seeing. It's entirely dependent on the point in the field from which we are perceiving it. So for example, the people in the first row, you can see me, but you can't see the people behind you. Even though the image of those faces, the information in the holographic field is right here next to you. And it's right here in front of you. But the image of the whole that we see is dependent on what's in line of sight for us. And so we are peering into this hologram from our own point of view, <laughs> literally. Each of us has our own point of view into the hologram. In my book, Cosmometry, that Beth mentioned, her favorite book, <laughs> I audaciously propose <laughs> a, uh, a new postulate of holographic physics where I say the angle of incidence equals the angle of perception. The angle of incidence equals the angle of perception. When I change my angle of incidence, I change my angle of perception in the hologram. Just like actually when we take a holographic plate and we change the angle of incidence, we change the angle of perception of the holographic image. It's exactly the same thing. Well, one of my heroes, the great physicist David Bohm, totally got this. I think many people know that in this room, that Bohm figured this out a long time ago. And of course, Bohm was one of the most avid proponents of the holographic universe model, even though his ideas and theories were only embraced in a very limited way by his colleagues. As I was completing the writing of my book, I decided to revisit some quotes I had pulled from, from Bohm's book called Wholeness in the Implicate Order. And I was astonished to find this one where he's saying, the core ideas of what I've just been telling you in just two sentences. <laughs> and he's referring to the underlying order of the universe, what he called the implicate order, and the, the manifestation that comes out of it, he called the exp explicate order. And the implicate enfolds information into it, and then unfolds the information out of it to become the explicate. And so Bohm says, the value of the hologram in this context that is describing the underlying order is that it may help to bring this new notion of order to our attention in a sensibly perceptible way, perceivable by our senses. But of course, the hologram is only an instrument whose function is to make a static record or snapshot of this order. The actual order itself, which has thus been recorded, is in the complex movement of electromagnetic fields in the form of light waves, just as we've been experiencing here. He goes on to say, such movement of light is present everywhere and in principle enfolds the entire universe of space and time in each region as can be de demonstrated in any such region by placing one's eye or a telescope there, which will unfold this content. So let's imagine this. 
we're out orbiting the Earth, out where the Hubble Space Telescope is. And the Hubble is capturing light from a point millions of light years away. And what does it find? It's this beautiful ringed galaxy just way out there in space. And then it rotates around and it captures light hundreds of thousands of light years away. And look at this, there's two interacting spiral galaxies all converging and merging together. And it's, Hubble has found many such examples of these spiral galaxies interacting with each other. And of course, there are billions and billions and billions of galaxies that fill the vast expanse of the universe. And Hubble's eye is smaller than a pinpoint, <laughs> way smaller than a pinpoint relative to the vast expanse of the universe. And yet the image of every one of those galaxies is present right at that point where Hubble's eye is located and every other point around in the field. And so really the image of the entire universe, that is the relative image that's in the line of sight, is present at every point in the field of light. And is anybody wondering if the universe is holographic anymore? <laughs> So to round out this picture, let's return back to the, to the traditional model that says our 3D reality is a projection from a two-dimensional surface somewhere. Uh, some of the current theories say it's infinitely far away, which is very convenient because then you can't point at it. <laughs> Where is that surface? And let's look at you know, address the, the shortcomings of that model relative to what we've just explored. So the first thing to understand about when making a holographic image on a flat glass plate, as Bohm pointed out, is that the image is capturing just a snapshot out of what is otherwise a constantly moving field of light. It's literally just taking a slice out of an interference pattern, a holographic interference pattern that's everywhere, and it's just capturing a slice out of that field. And the second thing is that the supposed two-dimensional surface of the holographic plate is actually not two-dimensional. When we zoom in and we look at the photosensitive emulsion that's on the surface of that plate, what do we find? We find atoms, molecules. These are very much three-dimensional objects. And so in reality, the holographic phenomenon is a three-dimensional phenomenon. It's not a two-dimensional one. There is no two-dimensional surface. That's actually where the illusion lies. <laughs> and that's what's making it so challenging for the current models to answer the question, is the universe holographic? And so we could actually say that we are living in the emulsion, so to speak of the holographic image. We are living in the hologram and we are the hologram. And the hologram is everywhere on the surfaces, in the field of light, inside and outside. It's all, and as Nassim's theory just makes so clear, you know, it's all completely one holographic field. And so we live in a holographic universe. And this is our everyday experience of it. And in every moment we are peering into and we are appearing within and as the hologram. And so, welcome to the Sona Luminous Hollow Field. <laughs> I'm grateful to be here with you all. Enjoy your journey. Thank you. Uh, a solution. Right? To understand uh, the scale relationship that bounds our universe.